So the Omnicam, it's the big buzz of all dentistry right now, and uh, there's some fancy things being shown, but you know what? I'm going to show you something that we can do just with plain old bread and butter dentistry. I got myself into something that I wasn't truly expecting, and uh, the Omnicam really saved me. I call this going deep. We begin by finding an open margin on a routine bite wing x-ray of a gold crown. It looks pretty straightforward. The gum tissue looks nice. Um, obviously you can see a gold crown. The mesial margin is open. There's a large buildup and it looks to be a small post here preoperatively. So we inject the patient as we're waiting for anesthetic. All we have to do is image her quadrant and we do this for two reasons. One, we're going to set up the preoperative uh, three-dimensional shape for the final restoration. So that's a fancy way of saying that we're just going to duplicate what the three-dimensional shape of the gold crown is in a new Emacs crown. But the other thing we can do with this impression is we can set it up to be the beginning or the foundation of our final impression. So as we get these uh, this quadrant imaged in three dimensions, we're going to save one file as the preoperative file, and then the other one is going to be our basis for our prep file. The gold crown is cut off, and uh, you can see the recurrent decay on the mesial, which wasn't too bad actually, but it did get up underneath the buildup to some degree, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get the, the buildup out, make a new one. And as I was cutting into the buildup on the mesial, the distal lingual of the filling just fell right out. There was no adhesion uh, at all to it. In fact, the gold crown was probably keeping it in. Now, at this point in the game, I'm instantly thinking, oh goodness, this is going to be a much more difficult case. And, you know, what do we do? Do we uh, put a, try to put a matrix around that, get way subgingival and uh, seal it up? Or do we get rid of the gum tissue so we can actually get our margin all the way down for a physical impression. So this is a difficult situation and one that I didn't think I was going to be in because I didn't think the buildup actually was on the distal lingual cusp. Because I already had taken most of the quadrant, I just need to fill, on, fill in the very end of it with the uh, prep information. So you can see the distal lingual uh, area of that where the cusp had fractured. Once we take the impression, all we have to do is define where the margin goes. And this is where Sarek and the Omnicam really shine because when you look at that uh, concavity on the distal lingual, where I put that margin, Sarek will mill down to it. But if I was going to put a matrix band in that area, it'd be a much more difficult area. I don't know if I could truly seal that with a nice contour. So anyway, we got our margin marked and we're going to tell Sarek where the uh, insertion axis is. Basically, we're defining the mesial and distal. And then we're going to run the uh, calculation. The copy line is the uh, area at which we're going to duplicate the gold crown. Now on the distal and the distal lingual, I didn't quite fill all that in. So that's the reason why you see that more yellow model, but it's insignificant. I just wanted the occlusal surface covered basically. CERC will then calculate what the three-dimensional shape is for the proposal, but it uses the uh, shape of the gold crown uh, that was taken off for occlusion and um, the preoperative surface. The proposal is completed and now we just need to tweak it just a little bit. So I'm going to uh, make the emergence profile uh, towards that distal lingual a little bit better. I'm making it a little bit fatter here. Now I know it looks a little rough. I'll come in and smooth that out here in just a second but I wanted to give it a nice contour for that gum tissue to uh, rest up against. So we'll select the tool wheel and go to a smooth or a melting tool and then just melt out those little rough areas. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in just a little bit on the lingual. It um, under contoured that and I'm going to 
fill that in. Now what you're seeing here is not adding to the margin, it's just more of the contour and get it nice and smooth. Now that we have the proposal completed, I can check it and verify it with what the uh, gold crown three-dimensional shape is. And that's the speckled surface you're seeing there. And now we're ready to mill the restoration. After milling, uh, we would fire it, of course. This is Emacs, which uh, takes about 15 minutes for that to occur. It will finalize the crystallization, and then we cement this. Now, I chose to cement this with a resin-modified glass ionomer, Fuji Plus, because I didn't feel comfortable about uh, keeping a dry field down there in such a deep zone subgingivally. But because it had good mechanical resistance and retention form, uh, we can use resin modified glass ionomer with uh, Emacs uh, routinely. And you can see the post operative x ray uh, turned out very nice. Uh, there is some residual cement on the mesial, maybe even a little bit on the distal, but you can see the contours of the, the margins, especially in that distal lingual area. And this is the power of the Omnicam. If it can see it, it can mill to it. So it took a very complex, difficult case on that distal lingual area and made it actually quite simple. And the patient never even realized that it was a difficult situation and uh, she was quite happy with the uh, final restoration. All right, so I hope you could see how much easier it is to go subgingival by using the Omnicam. It is amazing. Remember, if Sarah can see it, it can mill to it. Mm -hmm.